What is up party people? Hope everyone is having a great day. Let's dive right into this video. So I've got a list of reasons versus results. So I want you to identify yourself down in the comments about which agent you are. But in this video, I want to cover the main differences I've seen in the agents who want reasons and the agents who want results. So the people who make excuses for not having life and business the way they want it to be and the people who have life and business the way they want it to be. So let's go over the main differences that I've seen personally coaching a lot of insurance agents to make a lot of money and the people who just give up halfway through the program and expect refunds, cancellations, and any of that stuff. Let's start off with the people with excuses. They do not want what they say they want, meaning they say they want to make a million dollars, but they are not willing to sacrifice the things that they have to, meaning Netflix, Xbox, the addiction, whatever the case is. They want to have Call of Duty lobbies with their friends instead of making calls or sitting with people. They have expectations that things should be a certain way. Usually this comes from being sold a pipe dream on a recruiting call and they're chasing after something that isn't even meaningful to them. And when they don't get what they think they were going to or it doesn't represent itself in the way they expected it to or expected it to look like, then they get depressed pissed off, happy, unset, like I don't know what they feel. I can't feel it, but they usually get depressed and nine out of 10 of them will give up. Next is they compare themselves to people on leaderboards. Here's the dangerous part about that. No one knows the context of your life better than you. So it doesn't matter what Joe Blow is doing on the leaderboards. He could be doing 50, $100,000 a month of production, but I don't care about submit. I care about issued, paid, what gets deposited into the bank account. Here's a quick money hack. Money sticks with people who pay it the most attention. It's that simple. I'll say that again. Money sticks with people who pay it the most attention. So write that down or let me know in the comments if you like that. They compare themselves to people on the leaderboard. So this dude did $50,000 a month. This person got depressed and pissed off because they seen what Joe Blow was doing and because they aren't having the same level of success, they judge themselves and they start losing belief in why they even got in this industry in the first place. And what they don't know is Joe Blow only issued 10% of that business. He issued paid five grand out of 50 grand. Now he's getting hit with cancellations of contracts. Policies are getting reneged, canceled. He might get sued in the future for writing a bad policy. You never know what's gonna happen with these terrible behaviors of agents. They'll do a coaching program and they will not do exactly what the program tells them to. So guys, the worst thing I've ever done is paid for advice and not listen to it. <laughs> it's so Not you as a person, it's but that behavior is very What's the point in doing it? If you think you can already do it better or if you think you're gonna figure it out on your own, which you wouldn't or you already would have, why well, even join the coaching program in the first place? You have to give your full focus and effort and do exactly what the program says. And when you make more money than the person that told you how to do it is doing, then you can do things your own way. But until then, the tree has already been shook. The apples and the fruits have already fallen. Go pick them up instead of trying to go shake a new tree. Makes no sense. Here's a big one. They never deal with the real issues. Guys, 90% of your thinking comes from other people, and most of you are not even aware of the thought patterns, beliefs, character traits, and skill sets and habits that you picked up from your parents, your grandparents, your close family, friends, and relatives, and annoying cousin who picks their nose and eats their boogers at a very young age. Zero to seven is when you are most imprintable. Eight to 13 is when you formed your truth of the world, and you found your role models, and you wanted to be exactly like them. You've been programmed to run these patterns, for so long and guys relationships are more about patterns before they're ever about a person i'll say that again relationships are more about patterns before they are ever about a person so write that down so we have this computer calling all the shots up here it's a seven-year-old playing with the computer it's your seven-year-old curious brain trying to do everything to keep you alive not happy this two million three million three million year old device is not designed to keep you pleasured it's designed to keep you alive you ever heard of the fight or flight mechanism yeah most of us are constantly in fight or flight mode. We live in a very parasympathetically driven state, which can be a dangerous place to be in sometimes if you don't know how to control it. So an example of this was, I learned passivity at a very young age by walking stepdads and boyfriends walk all over my mom. And so later on in life, I would go try to fix broken women like my mom 
and they would walk all over me because I did not respect myself. See how this correlates? So what habits do you have from childhood? Because I'm guaranteeing you most of those are the drivers for your problems. What you think are your problems or habits that you picked up from other people and you're carrying weight that was never designed for you to pick up in the first place. They come from cycles and traditions and beliefs that your parents never fixed when they had the chance to do so. Because we'll do what's comfortable and easy most of the time. The people with reasons, their attention is scattered across 10 different things and never put the full amount of focused effort required into the things that are important. You hear more activity, buy more leads. I can't stand that. If it's not worth doing, it's not worth doing well. Most of us have the doing well part down pat. We're just doing things that are not worth doing, like buying more leads, doing more activity. Doing the right thing at the wrong time is still the wrong thing. It's that simple. If you're calling a lead at 9 p.m. at night, do you think they're gonna be happy when they pick up? No, they're probably gonna tell you to f I would. They listen and take advice from people who do not have what they want in life or people who cannot get them to where they are looking to go. So they're taking mentorship from people who do not have the efficacy nor integrity. So the skill sets and the wanting for you to have a good life, like they don't care what's in it for you. They only care about what's in it for them. You're taking advice from people who have smaller goals for your life than you do. Don't recommend it. They are scared and unwilling to invest in skills, character traits, and beliefs to solve their problem. Guys, here's the thing about that. The same belief that caused a problem, think about this, do you think the same belief that caused a problem is going to fix it? No. If your belief is that you can't sell, do you think that belief is going to help you sell? No. Get it out of your head. Limiting beliefs. Can't stand them. They say they are going to try. This drives me f nuts. Trying means you're going to fail in advance. Trying to me means you can do the process of not. I'm going to try dialing. What I hear in my internal dialogue is you can do the process of not dialing. Do or do not do. There is no try, as my main man Yoda says. The lies and excuses don't stop there either. So the people who get results, let's switch into a positive orientation. They execute and do everything the way they were told and shown how to do it. Hmm, success leaves clues. Let's just copy what they're doing exactly, systematically, in this process. And I wonder what happens. You might make some money, you might make some sales, and families might give you referrals because you did a really good job for them. They don't make excuses or lie. I cannot stand liars. They drive me nuts, especially the people who try to explain to me why they cannot do something. I'm not believing your lie. Why? Because you might convince me on how to not to do something. I don't want to do it. You might influence me. They don't deal with things on the spot, meaning they'll let bad habits, addiction, run its course. Guys, I cannot tell you how many people have joined my coaching program and they have things like addictions, they let their spouse walk all over them. The list doesn't stop there. But instead of just confronting the fear, confronting the decision right there, they let it keep going. They think they can deal with it later. No, the successful people that I see, they deal with And when you get really good at the game of life, which is pretty much compared to chess, to me, you can strategize and you can work ahead. It makes a lot stress-free life and it gives you the chance to have critical thinking and problem solving and future orientation towards solving problems before they even get here. You can plan ahead and you can manage the day-to-day -day because guys, you're always running two businesses, the one that you're in and the one that you're becoming. Thank you, Tony Robbins, for teaching me that. Ooh, here's a good one. They constantly seek improvement in order to make progress. That is awesome. They always know there's more to learn. The trap door to their brain has not shut. So guys, they deal with shit as it comes up. They constantly seek improvement in order to make progress because progress is what makes you happy, not satiation rewards. What a satiation reward is, is when you get the thing that you thought you wanted, even though it shows itself in a completely different way than you expected it, then you kind of stop being so hungry. Like, if you're starving, all you think about is food. But like, if you're not starving and you eat, you're not as hungry anymore. You go do something else. Ooh, these people go through the program and do the same boring thing every day that makes them money. They, fake it, they focus on the two or three actionable items that are repeatable at scale consistently. That's why I named the program of my digital product course the Sahara Method. It's long, it's dry, it's ugly, it's boring, just like the desert but it works if you do, that's my guarantee. They take criticism and feedback very well and make changes to the behavior. Flex, the best thing you can do is have a flexibility of behavior. This is the law of requisite variety in neurolinguistic programming, which just states that the person or the system with the most flexibility of behavior will always control the system. Meaning if you're doing something that's not working, why keep doing it? 
Do something different, take a different approach. So these people adapt and implement very quickly. They have an abundance mindset, which I love and I personally, I think this has been the biggest driver in my life. I experience true abundance in what I have now and I'm very grateful for it. Even this phone case, this phone, I treat it very nice because I worked for this, I got it, I'm so appreciative of it and what it does for me in my life. Thankful for this chair, these blue jeans, I love Hollister jeans. They're comfortable, they're thick, they don't rip easy and they're comfortable. I want them. I want them because I want them and want is reason enough. Wish more people would get that. But you must experience true wealth in what you have right now. You must experience true abundance what you have right now before you experience wealth. Because if not, you'll just have a scarcity mindset for the rest of your life, which I highly do not recommend. They are very emotionally intelligent and have dealt with a lot of struggling in life. And they tend to be critical thinkers and have a proclivity for problem solving. So the people who have orientations and proclivities towards problem solving, meaning they see the math equation and they were always the kid to go up and try to solve it. Even if they made a mistake, they weren't worried about being judged or laughed at. These are the guys that can go walk up to a crowd full of girls, embarrass themselves, and not worry about what them friends, what the friends of the girl have to say. The same principle applies. This is the dude who's willing to go try to curl more weight than he did the next day or the day before, regardless of what other people are looking at him in the gym doing. He might not get it up off the rail that time. He might have to get spotted or helped, but at least he tried. They're very energetic. Ooh, this is a big one. And they do not purposefully procrastinate. Guys, I'll tell you, it does not take a week to get back with clients. Stop doing end of week. Move it to end of day or end of hour. Why? Because that's how long it takes. They get in front of tons of people and make a lot of mistakes very quick. They pay down their time tax of ignorance. So this is, I get this equation from Alex Ramosi, the greatest entrepreneur of our generation. And it's volume times time equals skill. So I'll see if my editor puts this on the screen for you guys. Volume multiplied by time equals your skill. So the more volume, the more activity you do in a shortened time frame or a period of time dictates your skill efficiency. So it's to what extent or how good are you at this? It's not are you good or are you not good, it's just to what extent are you good? The best agents focused on the highest leverage activities, mean they focus on the thing with the lowest amount of input with the highest amount of output and return. So they focus on high leverage opportunities. What this would be an example of is a book. You write it one time, it sells infinitely. That's very high leverage. They tend to respect themselves and don't have as many limiting beliefs. I love this. Guys, if you want other people to respect you, you have to respect yourself. Because if you're not even willing to believe in yourself, why the f*** would anyone else? If you don't love yourself, why would anyone else love you? If you don't respect yourself, why would anyone else respect you? And I'm under the impression that no one deserves anything. You have what you have right now because it's all you can handle. That's just the truth of it. They have a belief that because others are successful in this industry, that means they can be successful in this industry too. As I said, success leads clues. I hope this video helped you guys. If you found it valuable, don't be stingy. Be generous. I promise you this will carry over in all aspects of your life. The more you give, the more you grow. If you want your customers to start giving you referrals, you have to start giving referrals out too. So take this video, send it to an agent you care about. You're not, they're not gonna steal your clients. And if they do, they want your clients to begin with. You help other people solve their problems, they'll help you solve yours. So if you got some value out of this video, send it to an agent you care about, like, comment, all that fancy stuff. Hit the dislike button for all that matters to me. I'd love to have earned your subscription if you got something out of this. Until next time, if you guys wanna see anything in particular, Drop a link or drop a comment below. Let me know what type of content you guys want to see. I make this to help you guys get rich AF. I don't want you waiting until 85 to make your first million. I want you to do it in the next couple of years, if not sooner than that. But the only person responsible and in charge of that is you. So guys, you have everything you need to be successful. You have all the resources you need to be successful. No one is coming to save you. And this is truly all on you. This can either be scary or empowering, depending on what type of agent you are. So I'd ask you to leave below in the comments, do you want reasons or results? So happy hustling party people. I'll see you guys on the next video.